The idea of a magnitude of a vector is that a magnitude of a vector is referring to the length of the vector itself. So if I were to consider any vector, such as this one, then the length associated with this would be considered the magnitude of the vector, as a line segment rather than as a directed line segment. So the length is going to be equal to the magnitude. Now the notation that we use for the magnitude of a vector is going to look an awful lot like a pair of absolute value brackets. Actually, let me double check on that. That might be different. Uh, depending on the textbook that you're looking at, the magnitude of a vector could look like one of two different things. It could look like single absolute value bars, or it could look like double absolute value bars. Now again, that's going to depend on what textbook you're using. Now, with that in mind, suppose that we have a vector v that we can break down into a horizontal component and a vertical component. We'll call those v1 and v2. So vector v will be equal to the vector v1 comma v2. The magnitude of a vector is going to be obtained by taking the Pythagorean theorem, or using the Pythagorean theorem. So square each component, add them together, and that'll give you the length of the hypotenuse associated with this. So for example, if I wanted to consider the vector v equals 6, negative 1. So 6, negative 1 would be a vector that looks kind of like this. If I'm interested in finding the magnitude of this vector, We'll use the double because, you know, uh, double protection. This would be the square root of 6 squared plus negative 1 squared. Squaring each of those and adding them together will give us the square root of 37. Now, there is a special vector to know. And it's referred to as a unit vector. Anytime you hear the word unit show up in a mathematical sense, it means that something is going to be equal to 1. In this case, the magnitude of the vector, if the magnitude is equal to 1, then you have yourself a unit vector. So given any vector v, a unit vector, unit vector in the direction of v is given by, we'll use u to represent unit vector, take the vector v and multiply by the reciprocal of the magnitude of v. You could also say take the vector v and divide by its magnitude you are guaranteed to get a unit vector. So for an example of this, I would like to consider the following vector. Vector v is equal to the vector negative 2, 5. So this would be a vector that if we draw the initial point at the origin, it'll extend two units in the negative x direction and five units in the positive y direction. What I'd like to do is find a unit vector in the direction of V. <clears throat> so we'll start by applying the Pythagorean theorem to find the magnitude of V. So we square the negative 2, we square the 5, add them together, and take a square root. That'll be the square root of 29. Now with that in mind, the corresponding unit vector, we take our vector v and divide by this magnitude. So vector v and divide by this magnitude. That would give us negative 2 over the square root of 29 and 5 over the square root of 29. 
the thing that I need to point out regarding this is that this is exactly where trigonometry comes into play. Because if I were to label this side, or this angle, as theta, then negative 2 over the square root of 29 would be referring to the adjacent side, dividing by the hypotenuse. This is exactly the cosine of theta. 5 over the square root of 29 would be the opposite side over the hypotenuse. This is the sine of theta. One of the other reasons that these are referred to as unit vectors is because if this were a terminal point with an initial an initial point at the origin, this would be considered a point on the unit circle. This is going to give rise to what we call the polar representation of a vector.